thousands of more beds are coming to for-profit long-term care homes over the next few years. Advocates and family members are disgusted by the province's decision, saying it doesn't make sense. I can't even make sense of it. It makes absolutely no sense. Teresa Trimboli's parents died three days apart from COVID last April at a for-profit long-term care home in Etobicoke. 27 residents died in total during the pandemic at the village of Humber River Heights. Trimboli says the care her parents received wasn't good. He constantly fell. Um, they would go into his room and they'd find him on the floor. Um, he had a really bad fall where he had a brain bleed and he broke some bones in his face. I went to the nursing home and my mother, uh, it was obvious that her diaper was fully soiled and I had pressed the button to get a nurse or a PSW to come in and, and maybe change her diaper and 45 minutes nobody showed up. Tremboli and advocates can't believe the province will be allocating 18,700 beds to for-profit homes over the next few years. A little over 13,000 beds are going to nonprofit, and just over 3,000 are going to municipal homes. Long-term care advocate Vivian Stamatopoulos says the ratio should be reversed. We have the statistics on, on just how much more likely you were to die of COVID, these poor residents, if they lived in a for-profit home, then, you know, going down to being a not-for-profit home, and then at the lowest level being, you know, 1.5 deaths per uh, 100 registered beds for the municipal homes. We asked the Minister of Long-Term Care's office what they will do to ensure residents are safe, and here's what they said. In part, long-term care home operators have a duty to provide a safe and healthy environment for residents. To fix long-term care, we've introduced legislation that will overhaul inspections and hold long-term care home licensees to account to ensure residents are safe and well cared for. This also extends to the care provided by loved ones. We've seen the mental and emotional hardship visitor restrictions have had on residents and their loved ones and continue to explore opportunities to expand and clarify the rights of residents to receive visitors and the role of caregivers. Stamatopoulos wishes the province would stick to their word and actually do better in all aspects. In homes like Orchard Villa, homes like Tender Care, the worst mass casualties in Ontario long-term care history are up for debate right now. And I can tell you that the families are horrified and deeply upset at the thought that these providers with documented histories of, of improper uh, care provisioning are up for 30 year contracts. The province says the plan is to open up at least 7,000 beds in spring of next year. The advocate we spoke with hopes the province changes their mind and instead puts more resources into municipal and nonprofit homes. For City News, I'm Malia Sheikh.